So today I'm going to start looking at these beauties that I picked up uh, from Goodwill. And they're, you know, the exterior is this beautiful uh, gold covering, this black covering. But um, wait until you see what's inside. They're both kind of like suitcases. So here, let me crack this one open. We've got a cool set of speakers. The actual wires for the speakers are in here. And I'll have to take a look in here and see how the speakers are. But then, then what we've got here is an Admiral Stereo High Fidelity. Let's take a look around at that beauty. And then when we flip this open, we've got this really cool looking record player. It's a uh, Admiral Stereophonic Super 20. And um, I haven't plugged it in yet, but it's just gorgeous. Tube based, I haven't even looked at the schematic. The voice of music. Nice damping. Yeah, everything just feels perfect on it. I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to see what the circuit board is and uh, figure out what I need to do to get this baby up and running. Kind of dusty, but it looks like all the tubes are there. And it looks like the tubes are original. Here's our model number. And the chassis number, which is what I was looking for. This is interesting. Looks like there's been some work done here that this uh, connector has been replaced. Let's see if we can get it out. We got it up. And then we just have these two uh, RCA jacks. And then, and that's what our record player looks like underneath. Everything looks nice. Nice and modular. So here's a close look at the um, chassis number and model number. Looks like um, from 1961. Okay, so I just disconnected these speaker jacks from the back to get the chassis out. Chassis out. There's some screws right, or some nuts right in there, and then uh, let's see, a nut right in there, and I think then then that'll, and then I think that'll lift out like that.
Okay, so there's our chassis. January 1, 1961. Sure looks nice. Looks like it's going to be easy to work on too. Yeah, that resistor there looks a little rough, but I don't know whether it's just that way. Um, yeah, it looks sure it sure looks straightforward. A rectifier there, and then two six six BQ fives. And then what are the 12AX7s? Couldn't be simpler. Okay, so this is for power for the turntable. Then this is the input from the turntable. And then a 6BQ5, 6BQ5, 12AX7, and a 5Y3GT rectifier tube. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is this capacitor right here, this goes right across the, the line. And so I'm going to pull this capacitor out and I'm going to put a safety capacitor there. Safety capacitor like this. Uh, the same size, but um, it's going to be uh, better. And I'm not sure why this wire is wrapped around like that. Maybe somebody can comment on that but um, yep that's how I'm gonna start okay so we got the safety cap for the line cap in and um, so now we're gonna move to recapping the power supply and um, so right now we've got this big resistor which is out of tolerance got a replacement here and that comes from right here and then um, so the cap then goes across to ground so I got these caps right here so I'm gonna I don't need to have that all the way over there I'm going to put it closer to closer to here so that the cap goes right across here um, to ground across to here and then um, and then from here we'll bring that capacitor we'll bring the resistor um, over to this line right here and uh, actually that's going to be quite nice um, I, it'll be a much nicer configuration I think all right so I went through and I recapped the power section and some other sections and uh, first thing I did is that uh, first thing we do is we come out of the rectifier we come into a 40 microfarad capacitor and then into a 100 ohm resistor this 100 ohm resistor was out of tolerance and so I replaced it this one next to it this 150 ohm that was around 200 ohm so that was out of tolerance too and uh, this cap uh, that leg there was is just bad it's shorted and um, this one was okay and this one was had uh, wasn't great and so what I did instead is coming off the rectifier right here, I go right to the resistor right here, and then I have this capacitor down here to ground. And then I come over here, and I have my 150 ohm resistor coming across to here with a, a 80 microfarad capacitor going to ground. And then from here, then... I have one side comes up, or uh, I have my 40 microfarad uh, capacitor here, and then um, coming out of there, I have my two 1K resistors here. This wire here leads over to here, and I had to uh, put on these uh, terminal strips, and I put these two caps here, 
And so I'm going to start powering it up and, and uh, see what happens and see if my voltages are good. I also replaced uh, the coupling or the, um, uh, the grid caps here, right here, and the other one is uh, right here, and I also replaced these ceramic capacitors here, these point zero zero two two microfarad capacitors here. Um, I replaced those as well. And so these CAN capacitors, this one and this one, aren't even being used now. Two of these sections were for uh, the, the grid caps and, um, I'm sorry, the cathode uh, caps and, um, and two of them were for here. And so I just took them all out. I didn't really check whether they were bad or not, but um, so that's where we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to power it up and check our power here, here. Uh, so our first node is here, our second node is here, third node here. Then we come over to here and here, and, um, and then we can check our final voltages here. I'm here. going through a uh, current limiting bulb over here. Then I've got um, a variac here, and then <laughs> I've got my meter here. And then I'm coming into here. And there I'm at about 68 volts. I'm not drawing too much current. Let me just check my voltages here. First, right coming out of the rectifier, 200 volts. Coming over here, 185. 172. So everything looks great. So I'm gonna. Okay, so we're just gonna trace our signal. Um, turn on. And uh, so first thing we do is we come into this potentiometer. We see our signal there. And then we come over to this cap. Then we come over to the grid of of the first tube. Okay. <clears throat> so coming out of the first so coming into the first tube we've got thirty four millivolts peak to peak. And then coming out, we have 270. So it looks like that first tube is working. And then that goes to, okay, we're coming into pin 7. And then we go out of pin 6. <coughs> That's weird. It doesn't look like it's doing any amplification out of that second stage. Let me check the voltage coming into that second. Let me check the voltage coming into that second stage. Hundred volts, hundred twenty coming into the first stage. You know, let me clean my pots off before I go too far. So here's what I'm finding with this amp. Um, all my power sections working great. And, uh, but what I'm finding is when I look at coming out of the first tube, uh, I'm connected right here, right there, and um, I'm getting a 
220 millivolts up from about 6 millivolts I'm putting in, right? And that looks pretty good. But, and then, um, then there's this tone circuit right here. You see this, uh, these checked marks right here. This whole piece in here is this couplet or couplet down here, um, right there. And so if I look at the next section of the 12AX7, we should see uh, a decent signal coming into here, but we're not seeing much. We're seeing, we're going from 216 millivolts. Now let me uh, hook up to the signal coming out of the couplet. And we're seeing really a signal that's just got a lot of noise and it's very small. It's just 36 millivolts. And um, it should be <laughs> it should be higher because I think coming out of this tube we're gonna want you know five or six volts. I think, I don't know, I put it into LT Spice to kind of look at what these tubes, if I didn't have this tone section here, what these tubes would do, and um, we should have a much larger signal coming out of this couplet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm, uh, I've drawn out the couplet and <clears throat> what it looks like here. And I'm just going to try to um, prototype one up. So let's, uh, let me wire it up and see if I can uh, make my own couplet. All right, so here's my my couplet, my homemade one, and uh, I don't kind of run it short of wire, so I had to redo them. So I think now what I need to do is uh, go into the circuit board and take out the one, and try wiring in this one. <clears throat> okay, I got it all soldered in. It wasn't wasn't easy, so plug it into the gimbal tester. Put my scope up to um, this input of this pin seven, so that's we got something coming up, but it's still small. What are you doing? I'm trying to get this stupid thing to work, and it doesn't work. So I built myself. I thought one of these parts was bad, so I built myself my own little part. And it still sucks. And it still sucks. Okay, well. I've learned some important lessons here. Um, I was seeing between the first and second stage of the 12AX7, I was seeing not much signal passing and I wasn't hearing hardly anything out of the final amp and I assumed it was because there wasn't much coming through the tone section because I seemed to have a clean signal in the first stage but then hardly anything going into the second stage. So I looked up what is a phonograph what voltage and they, they were saying it's uh, around uh, under 10 millivolts right so that's what I was setting my signal generator at well um, that's not the case at all in this record player at least so I just have the record player here I'm gonna just spin it by hand because that's not working very well underneath the motors not working very well and watch the scope here So we're getting a peak to peak of almost two volts and uh, that's quite quite different than the, <laughs> the small millivolts that I was putting through there. Here, let me try to spin it better. Yeah, I'm getting almost two volts coming through there so that changes everything. So my signal that when I had my signal gener generator set really low wasn't enough to go into the second stage. Well, now it's plenty to go to the second stage through that first amplification stage. Here's problem number two that took me a little bit is that this is the speaker jack and the speaker jack um, it shorts. So if you have um, if you don't have something plugged into here the, the ground and the, and the um, 
plus wire short out so I had to put a piece of paper in there and now things are looking a lot better so now I gotta figure out what to do I'm pretty ex I was pretty happy with how well this thing turned out but I'm just gonna take it off and re-solder back in that couplet and I think we're back on track I think that um, it was working fine I just my testing was screwed up so I learned a lot about the circuit kind of tracing everything through and I've learned how to make a couplet but whatever now I'll have to solder that all back up I don't know it's gonna be a little dicey because these are really short wires but that'll keep me busy okay well here's these weird um, shorting connectors here and they've got a little piece of paper in there so when you take one of the speakers and plug it in then there's an insulator there that uh, keeps the so when you pull it out then they short together but when you put it like that there's a little piece of paper in there that keeps this from shorting against across these two here and um, on this one that broke off on me so what I'm going to try to do is slip some shrink tubing on this side and see if that can take care of that problem okay so that should give enough room for this to short together here but then um, Uh, should insulate that lower part there so let's try that out I mean, really, the best thing would be to just put uh, banana jacks on here, but then they wouldn't fit into the speaker. So that looks like it works pretty good. Okay, so I've got everything running here, and um, I've hooked up to the speakers. And uh, the speakers are running at, I think they're running at 2 ohms, but um, yeah, so you know the dummy load I've been using is 8 ohms and uh, but here I'm gonna turn it up and pardon the noise and you notice that the one channel um, the yellow one the yellow channel is distorting pretty quickly Okay, so I've got um, got my little dummy load there, and um, I'm hooked up to the output of the first uh, tube, and um, that's this one here, or the first section. That's right here and right here, and when I crank it. Right, we get a nice, uh, nice signal about the same size on both tubes, right? So then I'm going to move the probes. So now I have the probes hooked up to the um, output of the second tube. That's right, um, right here. So it's kind of on the one side of the balance pot. And um, we're seeing still a nice signal. So now I'm hooked up to right here, which is going right into the tube. And um, right there on the pot, on the balance pot. And uh, there we've got that big distortion at not that high a value. And so it's something's dragging that guy down. Okay, so I'm going to check the bias on those output tubes. And so I'm going to need the cathode resistance, the cathode voltage, 
cathode voltage and the grid voltage and um, just make sure that my I don't have any voltage sitting on in my caps and so if I check the number of ohms on here 140 then on this one 133 switch the amp on, let it warm up. <clears throat> so now I need my cathode voltages. So here I've got 6.6. Let me write it down here. And on this one I've got 6.5. And the grid voltages, let's see, two thirty five, and on this one, two thirty four. So, on my spreadsheet here, I put in those different values, and it looks like my um. Plate dissipation look, looks pretty good, but I'm just not getting that much power out before I distort, and I'm distorting at a real low point. And um, <clears throat> so I switch those tubes around, and the distortion there's distortion on both the tubes early, but uh, one of them is quite a bit worse. And so I'm going to order some new tubes and see how that affects the problem. Well, it looks like the tube it was a tube because now. I had all kinds of microphonics with it before and um, now our waveforms look really good. And in fact now the other looks like there's a little bit of distortion in the other one. This one's actually working better. So I'm going to change out both of those tubes. So after I added those tubes it sounds pretty good. Uh, the amplifier is working great and so I'm gonna cut it off right here and I've got a part two where I on the part two I'm gonna start uh, I'm gonna work on the speakers because the tweeters aren't putting out much uh, I'm gonna put banana plugs on it a lot of interesting things I have to fix the case a little bit and uh, so thanks for watching and please subscribe if you haven't yet and uh, stay tuned for part two thanks